What's up, everybody? Uh, so today, uh, we are one week away, by the way, from opening day, less than a week, uh, which is awesome. Uh, today, we're doing a contest response uh, to Lou Rock TV. Uh, he's a fellow YouTuber, had an awesome contest idea, so I figured I had to do it. Uh, so the contest was basically create the best baseball team you could possibly create based on a couple of criteria. Obviously, first criteria is it has to be a card that you own. Uh, second of all, it has to be a rookie card. Uh, now, there were some stipulations around what is a rookie card, which, you know, no matter what, uh, there's always a little bit of vagueness about what is a rookie and what's not a rookie card, especially when you get to vintage cards, which I'll go over in a little bit. Uh, but his only criteria was that um, it could be a, a rookie card. It could be a Bowman first card. He'll, he'll, he'll count that as a rookie card, which is usually like a prospect card, um, you know, for the modern cards. And he will also accept trophy cards. So if you guys know, like, for example, the Pete Rose rookie, um, his second year card has that, that trophy on there. Uh, so he would count that as a rookie card, even though it's technically a second year card. Uh, so sometimes that, you know, that rookie cup card is a second year card. Sometimes it's his rookie card, but either way, both would be acceptable. Uh, so I created the best team I could possibly create. And I think I pretty much killed it. <laughs> you guys will have to let me know what you think. So without further ado, here is the team that I put together. So batting first, I had to go with Ricky Henderson. So Ricky... It's really tough to, you know, I put him in left field batting first. Um, I felt like I had to get him in there because, you know, if, if you're going to have like the the best team ever, I feel like you got to start with the greatest leadoff hitter ever. And that's Ricky Henderson. I mean, it, one year he had 130 stolen bases. <laughs> and, and one year he, re he led the league in on-base percentage, OPS, OPS plus, run scored, won the MVP. So I want him as my leadoff hitter. What that does, of course, is puts a lot of great players on the bench or not even on the team, but I had to go with Ricky as my leadoff hitter. So uh, Ricky playing left, um, batting first. My number two hitter uh, is going to be Mickey Mantle. So I have the Mickey Mantle rookie, 51 Bowman, and um, kind of odd to have Mickey as my number two hitter. Obviously, he spent most of his time, uh, you know, in the number three or number four hole, I'm sure. Um, but Mickey uh, makes sense, actually, as a number two hitter. Uh, he, I like guys in my number two hole that um, can walk a lot, that get on base. And he led the league in OPS plus eight times, uh, would get on base all the time, plus, you know, hits a ton of home runs. Kind of like an Aaron Judge, but like even better. <laughs> uh, plus, he is a switch hitter. So you got Ricky batting first, uh, batting right. And then you got Mickey Mantle, who's a switch hitter. So I like to kind of mix that up. So I got Ricky Henderson, Mickey Mantle, and then batting third. I had to go with Millie, Willie Mays uh, batting third. Um, this is uh, the 51 Bowman rookie. Um, you know, for my number three hitter, I've always liked to go with uh, batting average guys and uh, Willie almost almost always hit over 300. He had a career 302 batting average. Uh, plus, he hit 660 home runs. So <laughs> not bad as my number three hitter. Uh, so we got Ricky, Mickey Mantle, Willie Mays as my uh, first three hitters. And then, of course, I had to go with Babe Ruth as my cleanup hitter. Now, I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. You know, the uh, Babe Ruth rookie is – some of you guys might be thinking that, you know, his rookie card was 1914. But – this is technically his first Gaudi card, so I don't know. I'm calling it a rookie card. I feel like if you have a, a, a Gaudi, a 33 Gaudi Ruth, you should be allowed to put that in your in your rookie card lineup. Uh, so I put it in there. Uh, Ruth, um, obviously a great cleanup hitter, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, led the league in home runs 12 times, so I think he can handle it. Um, again, batting left, so we got a, a righty, a switch hitter, a righty, and a left-handed hitter. Um, so that's my lineup so far. And then batting fifth, um, kind of a tough spot for Mike Schmidt. You know, I'm, I'm kind of expecting, you know, Schmidt's going to have a lot of RBI opportunities. Uh, hopefully he can handle it. Uh, you know, batting, uh, fifth, uh, playing third, uh, another right-handed hitter. Um, you know, I feel like he can handle it. You know, he's a 12 time all-star, uh, led the league in home runs eight times, um, four-time RBI leader. I just think that, like, I know what you guys are thinking, you know, Mike Schmidt, 
you know, can he handle that number five hole? I think he can. <laughs> um, I wanted to put Lou Gehrig here, but um, he's another lefty. And I just felt like I, I wanted to, uh, and if I put Lou Gehrig here, that means I'd have like five righties in a row. So I put uh, Schmidt here at number five. And then as I mentioned, batting sixth um, is going to be Lou Gehrig. Um, and again, like I said, he is a left-hander. Left-handed hitter, and um, one year he had 185 RBIs. So he's going to have a lot of RBIs uh, batting behind Mike Schmidt, Babe Ruth, Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, and Ricky Henderson. So hopefully he's up for the task, uh, batting sixth. Uh, my man playing first, obviously, Lou Gehrig. Uh, I know he's used to batting uh, fourth um, right behind Babe Ruth, but he's batting sixth in this lineup. Um all right, at, uh, batting seventh is going to be uh, Johnny Bench, uh, the greatest uh, catcher of all time. Had to go with Johnny Bench. Um, you know, Bench, one year he hit 45 home runs, drove in 148 RBIs. So I think he'll fit in uh, nicely on the <laughs> as the seventh hitter. Uh, the eighth hitter, I, and playing second base, I decided to go with um, uh, Jackie Robinson. Uh, so Jackie, um, it was either him or Joe Morgan was really my two guys that I was looking at. Um, I decided to go with Jackie. I uh, just thought it was just awesome to have Jackie Robinson in, in this lineup. Um, I, I love the fact that he's a stolen bases guy because my number nine hitter is going to be the the captain, uh, Derek Jeter. So what that what that does is at the bottom of my lineup, I got Jackie Robinson, Derek Jeter, and then and then back at the to the top of the lineup with Mickey Mantle. Uh, well, I'm sorry, with Ricky Henderson. So you got three um, guys that can steal bases that are fast. Um, so, and then of course I had to go with Jeter as my shortstop. Um, I feel like with all the talent on the team, I don't own a Honus Wagner rookie. So obviously I couldn't put Honus Wagner on there, but even if I had Honus Wagner, I might've gone with Jeter anyway, because with the talent that's, that's on this team, you kind of need like a captain and he would be the captain of my team playing short uh, we know he can, you know, uh, be in a room with a lot of big personalities, which I think is going to be important for this team. They need a guy that can corral all those big personalities. That's a, a winner. And uh, I love Jeter as my number nine hitter. Um, and can you, can you imagine, <laughs> like, if you're like, you know, Robbie Ray or something like that, and you come in and like, it's like Jackie Robinson's on third, Derek Jeter's on second, um, Ricky Henderson's on first, like bases loaded. And now you have to deal with like Mickey Mantle, <laughs> Willie Mays, and then Babe Ruth in the hole. <laughs> and you're just like Robbie Ray or Michael Lorenzen or some like random pitcher. And you're just like, oh God, I got to deal with this problem now. Like that's a major problem. You know, like when you have those guys on base and then you got Mickey Mantle, you're staring down at Mickey Mantle, you see Willie Mays on deck and then you see Babe Ruth in the hole and Babe Ruth just kind of like staring at you like, yeah, if you can get past Mantle and Mays, then you get to face me. <laughs> so uh, that that's my lineup. Um, of course, I got to do, I'm going to do all 26 uh, players on my team. So you got to have a backup catcher and I had to go with uh, Mike Piazza as my backup catcher. What I like about Piazza as my backup catcher, um, you know, he hit 427 career home runs. Uh, he's a he's probably the greatest offensive catcher of all time. So, you know, it, it, he could pinch hit for Johnny Bench and then come in as as the uh, the catcher after he pinches uh, pinches hits, pinch hits <laughs> for uh, Johnny Bench. And then, of course, I had to have Cal Ripken on there. Um, he's just the, uh, you know, him and the iron horse. I know I can count on them game in and game out. And uh, it's great to have Ripken on my team. Um, and it's going to be tough for him to sit, which is going to be a big problem, but I, I, you know, I don't, you know, maybe him and Jeter can kind of take turns playing, I guess. Um, you guys, uh, <laughs> may laugh at this, but I had to put A-Rod on my team. Like A-Rod's numbers are just insane. Like the, the years that he was really going crazy. Um, you know, he three times hit over 50 home runs as a shortstop. And then what I like about A-Rod too, is he could play shortstop or third base. And then I think he also played first base as well at, at one point in his career. So I know he could be like a good utility guy. So A-Rod, <laughs> my utility guy coming off the bench. Uh, then we got um, Hank Aaron as my um, kind of like my fifth outfielder or fourth outfielder. Um, you know, Hank Aaron can spell, you know, 
Mickey Mantle or Willie Mays or Babe Ruth, um, whatever, you know, whatever they, they need him to do. You know, if you need a guy that, that um, has 755 career home runs coming off the bench to pinch it, you know, if you need to uh, have him come in on a big spot, um, you know, then you got Hank Aaron coming off the bench. Uh, and then, of course, um, I had to keep uh, put Mike Trout on the team. Um, I, get, I guess I kind of look at Mike Trout as more of a utility hitter uh, or, or maybe um, like a, uh, a pinch runner. Like I'd probably have Mike Trout as a pinch runner. Um, you know, he had one year he had 49 stolen bases. So you could have Mike Trout, you know, uh, maybe go in for Babe Ruth. Like if Babe Ruth, you know, get, walks, you could have Mike, Mike Trout come in and run for Babe Ruth and maybe steal a base for you or something like that. So thought it was good to have Mike Trout on my team. You know, and then, of course, if somebody gets hurt, you know, you have Mike Trout. Um, now, in terms of my starting rotation, I'm going to go with uh, Walter Johnson as my ace. Um, you know, one year he had a 1.14 ERA and 36 wins. <laughs> so that's my ace, Walter Johnson. Um, pitching game two is going to be... Sandy Koufax, um, Sandy Koufax, his career, especially, you know, before he retired, <laughs> his, his year before he retired was 1.73 ERA and 27 wins. That's how he retired. Uh, so I, I that's my, uh, my guy, uh, as my number two pitcher, um, my number three pitcher, uh, pitching game three or whatever would be Greg Maddox. Um, probably the greatest pitcher, uh, that I've ever seen. Um, just knew how to, you know, get the ball where he wanted. Uh, at one point, uh, Greg Maddox won four Cy Youngs in a row. And uh, at one year, he had a 1.56 ERA. So I, I don't mind having Greg Maddox uh, as my number three starter. Uh, my number four starter is going to be, speaking of Cy Youngs, um, Greg Maddox won four in a row, and this is actually Cy Young. So I'm going to actually have Cy Young be my number four starter. Um, I like Cy Young as one of my starters because he has the most wins of all time. He also has the most innings pitched of all time. He holds the record for a lot of things and complete games, I believe, too. Uh, career ERA is 2.63 ERA. So, so, I mean, he can get me lots of wins, um, lots of innings pitched, you know, if, if I need him, um, could eat up innings uh, with my man Cy Young. Um, and then, uh, my number five pitcher, starting pitcher is going to be Pedro Martinez. Um, you know, it's either Greg Maddox or Pedro, you know, as maybe the greatest pitchers of my lifetime. Uh, one year he had 313 Ks and a 2.07 ERA. <laughs> so, and he's my number five, you know, and, and you guys, as you can imagine, um, you know, I, I'm not going to put him uh, in, in for too long. Uh, I'm not going to be like, you know, the, like the Red Sox did, uh, back in, what was that? 2003. Uh, I'm not going to do that where I leave Pedro in too long, uh, because this is my bullpen. So here's my bullpen starting off, um, with DeGrom, who's the, uh, the best pitcher in baseball right now. Um, without a doubt, in my opinion, it's either DeGrom or Garrett Cole, but I, I think it's DeGrom. Uh, so I'm going to have DeGrom as one of my relief pitchers. He could be more of my like long relief. You know, he'll be like more of like one of those mop up. Like if we're up 15 to nothing, I'll, I'll put, I'll have DeGrom pitch a couple innings. Um, then we'll, you know, sort of similar to that. Um, I'll also have Steve Carlton in sort of a long relief kind of role. Um, you know, Steve Carlton had four Cy Youngs. So I think he could probably handle that role in my opinion. Um, now my, my guys like, you know, when I want to win the game and I just uh, just need one inning, uh, I've relegated some of these starters to one in one inning type pitchers. Uh, and Bob Gibson. So what the the idea here was? I wanted to make uh, take starters that if you made them, if you just said, "Hey Bob, give me one inning, give me all you got for one inning," I think he would scare the heck out of you coming out of the bullpen can you imagine bob gibson coming out of the bullpen and you just said hey bob give me one inning oh my god i'd be scared out of my mind so i had to go with bob gibson which by the way at one year um he could if i need him as a starter one year he had a 1.12 era as a starter so you can imagine what he could do uh as a relief pitcher uh, another guy that would scare the heck out of you coming out of the bullpen is my man randy johnson 
Uh, one one year he killed a bird, um, you know, pitching. Uh, and one year he had 372 strikeouts. So I like Randy Johnson coming out of the bullpen. Another guy that would scare the heck out of you coming out of the bullpen because um, he's out of he was out of his mind. Roger Clemens. Um, Clemens was he had seven Cy Youngs by the way, guys seven Cy Youngs, <laughs> and he was crazy. And I like I feel like if you said, "Hey Roger, give me an inning," or just all I need you to do is go and strike this one guy out, he would just do it. Um, and then if he didn't, he'd throw like a bat at you or something like that because he was out of his mind. So I got Roger Clemens coming out of the bullpen. Um, my setup guy, I, I had to go with, uh, Trevor Hoffman, who is the, uh, by the way, it's the, my only ungraded card of this group, but Trevor Hoffman being the, uh, you know, the second greatest closer of all time. I had to have him as my setup guy. Although, you know, if I'm feeling Bob Gibson or Roger Clemens, um, I might go with those guys or Randy Johnson as my setup guy. Um, you know, if I want to, you know, use Trevor Hoffman for another day, I have, I can do that. Uh, and then, of, co of course, the closer um, is going to be Mariano Rivera. Um, I would assume that there's not going to be too many close games. But if there is a game where my team is only up like eight to nothing and I'm like, uh oh, like this is getting close, guys. We need to get like, you know, get this game closed out. You know, I might have Rivera come in in like the seventh inning just to make sure that we take care of things because we're only up eight, eight, you know, eight to nothing. Um, so Rivera come, you know, he's my closer, but I wouldn't be afraid to use him. You know what I mean? Like in a seventh inning situation, if I need to, um, cause I still have Trevor Hoffman and Clemens and Bob Gibson and Steve Carlton and Jacob deGrom coming out of the bullpen if I need them. Um, and then, uh, so those are my 26 players. And of course, <clears throat> um, I would be the manager. So here's, <laughs> And this is my rookie card. Well, like, whatever. It, I guess it kind of is. Um, so that's my uh, rookie card. I am the going to be the manager. Um, I'm going to have C uh, Cap Anson be my bench coach uh, because I figure um, he had 13, win uh, 13 wins as a manager. So I figure Cap Anson might make a good uh, bench coach. Although he probably would have to go through some diversity training <laughs> before he could manage this team. So... There you have it, guys. Uh, that that's my team. Uh, let me uh, now go to the to the field so you can kind of see how I have the the players positioned. All right, guys, and here is the full team on the field. You can see at a, an, an empty stadium, empty Yankee Stadium. Pretty cool. I must be during the pandemic because uh, there's nobody in the stands. <laughs> but uh, got Johnny Bench at catcher, Walter Johnson pitching to him. Then at first base, you got Lou Gehrig, second base, uh, Jackie Robinson, short, uh, and then Mike Schmidt at third. Of course, Babe Ruth at DH, but uh, that would be a hell of a uh, tandem. Uh, Derek Jeter throwing it over to Jackie Robinson, over to Lou Gehrig. <laughs> and then uh, in left, you got Ricky Anderson. In center, uh, you got Willie Mays. And in right, you got the Mick. And then, of course... Here I am over here just uh, kind of telling everybody what to do as the manager of the team. So there you have it, guys. That is my um, rookie, the best team I could put together uh, of my rookie cards. Um, let's see uh, if you guys could build a better team than that. I dare you. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you later.